Okay, let's take a look at the tools I've got here. I've got two white pencils, I've got a Faber-Castell Polychromos, and I've got a Caran d'Ache Supracolor 2 Soft. Now the Caran d'Ache is a little bit whiter, that's why I'm using two, but you could use either just one of those pencils, don't really need the two, but I'm going to use the Caran d'Ache for those uh, real light white tones. Now I've also got a black eraser there, but I'm hopefully not going to use the eraser at all because it doesn't really rub out well on here. So you want to be careful when you're doing these that you don't make any mistakes if you possibly can. And I'll also use a hard paper stump just to blend out some of the um, lighter tones here and there. But other than that, that's all the tools I'll be using. Okay, so let's get started properly. I've transferred my drawing over using white transfer paper. I couldn't afford to do any sketching lines or anything like that whatsoever because I would it would all show through. So the choices would be with this type of technique then you can do the drawing on some scrap thin paper and then trace it down or just trace the photo but I wouldn't advise trying to draw onto the pass on that surface because as I said you can't erase. Now I'm using a paper stump there, now it's a hard one. So if you watch my pastel videos, you normally see me use a white Derwent one. And that's very soft and it blends a lot. Now, I didn't want to use that because I wanted, you know, colored pencil doesn't blend that well on pastel matte or rougher surface. So to get any blend, I needed a harder uh, blending stump. Now that one is just a very, very cheap one, something like Crimson Blake just a few pence in a set but you can also make your own by rolling up paper quite hard so at the start of the drawing what I'm really doing I'm being super cautious I'm going really light because I when I say light touch I meant um, so I'm not putting down much uh, colored pencil at all because I want to build the layers and if I go too light I'm not going to be able to erase it easily as I said so as with um, my pastels and when I do oils as well usually I start off cautiously start off not uh, light enough yet build the layers very gradually as I go along drawing in the fur direction now the polychromos pencil has got that golden ring around the top of it as you can see and just blocking in slowly now this drawing took about three and a half hours to do and obviously the techniques repeated through it so that's looking quite realistic for about um, probably 10 or so minutes worth of work quite happy with the way the technique is working so far I know I've got the opportunity to go much lighter than this And you've got to go fairly slow on these because, as I said, I can't really erase all the way back to pure black. So I don't want to make any massive mistakes, get in any uh, critical areas in the wrong place. When you're layering with fur, generally look to, after you've done the initial bit of blocking in and you're putting in the haze that are going to show, look at the reference and look at the furthest part away so on this eye section that would have been the lighter tones to the top left and then layer as you're coming forward because those hairs are laying on top you don't see that many artists do that for some reason but obviously it makes sense to do it because that's the actual way it is on the animal the hairs are layering as they're coming forward so you see don't forget you can just fold your reference photo up to get it into the right position I wanted to see where all these areas come in at the top so that I can get that darker section above the the eye on that brow area in the correct place before I start filling in the rest of this fur detail and look how light the pressure has got to be on these areas where you can barely even see the fur that's under there and that's what I want I want the viewer to look into the drawing 
to know that the lighting effect, you know, is, is really dropping off dramatically and suddenly there. So just a suggestion on that bottom right hand corner. Now I'm coming in and doing these more distinctive fur strokes. My sharp pencil again. I'm building up the lightness, making sure that there's variety. When you look at the reference, all the haze are not going in exactly the same direction. They're not like a picket fence. There's a slight variety in all of them. And I find working a little bit faster stops me um, being regimented and stops me doing all those lines side by side. But you've got to try that for yourself. You may find going even slower helps you. So you can see, building it up gradually, slowly, slowly building up. There's no rush when you're doing this hobby. Try not to be rushing as a professional. I can't take as much time as I always want to all the time. But I try to slow myself down. To enjoy the process. Not just look forward to the completion. Enjoy the actual process of doing. So here's another area where I'm building up the layers slowly but surely, working my way down the drawing, drawing in the edge first so I know where I'm going, know how far these lines have got to go down. It's quite easy to make a mistake and go on a bit of autopilot and before you know it you've filled an area in and it's in the wrong place, you've gone at a, the wrong angle or something. See how I'm making those lines quite random. Obviously I'm following the shape and form structure of the lioness, or the lion, sorry. But um, I don't want all those regimented lines. So nice random lines. So I've got that reference photo folded pretty much in half now, so I can work on this left hand side as we're looking at the lion. Once again, keeping that reference really close by and trying to keep it pretty much in line as well. Because if you've got it out of line, so say I'm way up, I've got it way up compared to the drawing, I can glance across and easily, very easily, get some of these fur marks in completely the wrong places. So if you've got it in line, not exactly, don't have to worry about that, but pretty much, then it's just a case of glancing across copying from it, doing the lighter tones first. I've got a little bit more paper on my left hand side just in case I want to crop in or perhaps I want a bit more black there when I frame it. So same technique again but longer hairs on this side. Just gently gently blocking everything in first. Time to get the whiskers done sharp sharp pencils now because I want nice thin lines they need to be also very bright so I'm using that Caran d'Ache steady hand and because these are going over the top of everything once again that's going to help to give me that third dimension that uh, look of the nose area and the mouth and the highlights they're all going to protrude forward because I'm overlapping this now pushing that background mane a level further back. As I bring this video to a close, I hope you've enjoyed it. I think the paper worked out really great. It's uh, much brighter than what I would normally get from a, a nice dark Strathmore type of art again paper. It took many more layers as well because we've got that texture so I hope you've enjoyed this new technique or a variant on the technique and I'll see you all again real soon if you're looking for even more great art sources I've really got you covered first off I've got a patreon channel it's been going well over a year or so 
packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, it's on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or 500 members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also you get line art every month as well. And we've just designed a brand new companion website for it. So if you've joined other Patreons, and uh, channels and you found it very very difficult to navigate around we got this free website that comes with it all the videos are now just a single click away couldn't be any easier than it is i've also got my site jasonmorgan.co.uk lots of tutorial videos dvd discs and downloads on there and if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects i've got some of those too i've got 900 plus on my website wildlifeart-online.com and they will be copyright free for you so you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources and I'll see you all again real soon.